Well, here we are again on a another Friday morning, third episode in our six part series on Lord Teach Us to Pray. We welcome you, our Lynx family, and if you're a guest and new to us, we we welcome you as well. I'm Dennis Darville in Rome, Georgia, and this is my colleague and old friend. Randy Wolf. Randy is a former PGA Tour player. He's on our national board, and we've been in really a conversation about prayer, which is at its heart a conversation with God the Father through God the Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, and the power of the Holy Spirit. So good morning, Randy. Good morning to you again, Dennis. Good to see you. I'm glad to join you again. I'm very eager because I I just go ahead and sort of tip my hand here a little bit. I know the story that uh, you're going to tell because we we've talked about this one before and I think I've heard it twice and every time I've heard it you know I, my eyes at the very least moisten up pretty good I know you to be a man of prayer and I know you've been looking at Luke 11 1 through 13 as we've talked about it today we're going to be looking at the second petition Lord we ask you that your kingdom would come I know you've been giving this some thought. Talk to us about it. Well, it says, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done as well. And when I think of uh, will, I always want to pray, whatever I pray, that it is God's will. And I think God's will is that we know him and not just know about him. You know, I, I can function okay. I go to church. I know about God and so forth. And this is this is the story, Dennis, that, a friend came up to me on the practice tee at Buffalo Creek here where we play golf in, in Texas. And he said, Randy, he said, I know God and I, I uh, go to church and do all these things. I know who Jesus is. Why do I need to come to a Bible study? I didn't have a good answer. I just said, show up and we'll see. So he showed up and then he became a consistent uh, attendee. Then his life was changed about it. And his words to me were, Randy, I think, I knew about God. I didn't really know God. Now I know him. And he, he was in his 70s at the time. Uh, became a, 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 a great part of our group because when we would pray for each other at the end of each lesson, you know, he'd say, let's remember to pray for each other. So we set our watches for 316, like John 316. As a reminder, I've seen the guy on the practice tee. His watch goes off at 316. And he looks around and nobody around him. So he'll pray by himself or he'll go to somebody else. It's one of our Lynx brothers and they'll pray. Well, uh, he just uh, was an inspiration to us. Well, he got sick and uh, towards the end of his life, he knew that his days were were numbered. He honored me by wanting me to do his funeral service. I told him I would do it. So I'll never forget this, Dennis. It was a Friday afternoon. Funeral service started at two in the afternoon and there were lynx guys all over the, the the room there and we got a little long-winded as we do telling golf stories right and as we were closing uh their heads were bowed i was saying the closing prayer with the microphone right there and you know what happened at 316 our alarms went off the whole room <laughs> the alarms went off and we started laughing and crying at the same time. And all we could say was, thank you, Jesus, for remembering us. And uh, Charlie must have had a big laugh with that. So I love that story. Only, only Jesus. I mean, just a simple little thing that might look like a coincidence to others, but we know God and his providence. No coincidence. Maybe that little moment, right? Just to remind everybody of his love for us. I really appreciate you telling that story. As I've thought about this petition, Jesus is answering the prayer or answering the question, rather, of the disciple. Lord, we've seen you pray. Would you, would you teach us to pray? We, we want to pray like you pray. And after he's told them, which we discussed last week, pray that the Lord's name, that the Father's name would be honored. The second thing he instructs them and us to do is pray this way. Pray to the Father that your kingdom would come. Your, your kingdom would come. And, you know, I've thought about this for a long, long time. Does, does that simply mean we're asking that the final consummate kingdom would come and <clears throat> Jesus would break in and make all things new? Well, as I've researched this and dug around looking for, you know, how to really think appropriately about this, 
what I've discovered is through the years, the, the really great Christian scholars who really wrestled with this text have said that it's essentially like salvation. There's a past, present, and a future. You were saved if you're a Christian. You're now being saved in a progressive manner. And one day you will be ultimately saved because you'll be taken to glory. Well, the kingdom coming is like that. It's the kingdom has come initially in the person of Jesus Christ with his death, burial, and resurrection, but the kingdom's always advancing. It's always growing and expanding progressively. And then one day the final consummate kingdom is going to break in and all things will be new. Sin will be wiped away and tears wiped away and sickness and disease gone. So when I pray, I've, I've used this as a pattern prayer, and I usually pray it every day as I walk. When I get to this piece, I just pray that his kingdom would come in my life, meaning your lordship, your reign, your rule. I pray that's for my family. I pray this for our church leaders, our city leaders, our government leaders. Uh, and so essentially what the Lord's trying to teach us is I want you to pray daily that my kingdom would grow and expand and penetrate lives and hearts and transform the world. And so I sure hope our Lynx family are enjoying our brief little discussions here regarding the Lord's prayer, which we understand to really be a model prayer, a pattern prayer on how to pray. Great summary on, on the kingdom come. That's beautiful, Dennis. And uh, uh, we need to keep that at the forefront. It's C.S. Lewis said, if this is true, it's of infinite importance, not mm -hmm. moderately important. So yeah. Yeah, that's, a, that's a good place to stop for today. Randy, as always, good to see you. Thank you, Dennis. Every time Love I you. you make me cry, you make me laugh. <laughs> you're, just, you're just a delightful human being. Uh, I, I really do see Jesus in your life. So thanks for joining me. Thank you very much. I'm, I'm humble, Dennis. Thank you. Yeah, I need five aside, by the way. <laughs> uh, maybe more, actually. That's probably being arrogant on my part. All right, to my Lynx family, God bless you, Randy, and I say God bless all of you. We hope that the Holy Spirit is really moving your heart and pulling you into a deeper prayer life. God bless. God bless. Thank you.